Okay, so this is what we've got so far. I've actually got something worth showing, you know. Um, I can't quite remember where I left off on the previous update. I'd had it on my phone for a long time and I've only just uploaded it. But, here we are. We are 86 and a half hours into the build now. And I've got the. F I've done a lot on the fuselage. All the joints are now sanded down. All these outside pieces have a radius on them. So they are quite nice. I just, I, I, I think I've done an alright job of that. Uh, but basically, we've got the fuse uh, on the inside. I've lined it with one sixteenth inch plywood, which it says on the plans you can do it. It is optional, but I chose to line the cabin with this plywood because um, these joints here and here, there's a lot of leverage on these joints, and I even though I steered clear of those cyano glues on these joints I made, I did the joints with PVA and then went over them with epoxy and even when I was just working on the rest of the plane turning it around these joints were breaking and coming undone and even though when I got all these nose blocks in it was a lot better I didn't like this at all and it, I, it, it has to last a long time once it's all covered up and I just thought, for the sake of an hour or two of putting this sheet in, it, it could save me a lot of... Well, it could save me the whole model, essentially. But we have the vertical stabiliser and the rudder. This is finished. It's, it's ready to be covered now. I'm going to do that when I go back into the house, because that's not a very messy job. Um, so that, that's going to be covered, hopefully, by next video. This is the tailplane, which hasn't had anything else done to it since I last showed it, other than the fact I've made an elevator now. Um, these are the actual, these are the first elevators I've made that aren't just blocks of wood that are sanded to shape. Well, this was 1 8 inch, no, 3 8 inch squared balsa, and then there's sheet, and then there's actually what are basically ribs running down it. And uh, then sanded to shape, as you can see. And uh, I'm making the second one here. I haven't got those ribs that I've, I was just explaining about in this yet, but I've got... Well, it's gluing together and I've got it all clamped. It's nice and flat. Um, but looking back at the fuse, I've got my servos in it now, and this is where I ended up putting them. I don't know if I will put a bomb bay in, but I've also left a space here if I did put one in at a later date. Uh, I'm, I'm still undecided on that. I've got the slot for the fuel tank cut out. Oh, I've got the landing gear installed because I had trouble with that in the last video. And what I ended up having to do was cut into the balsa blocks. There was plenty of meat on the blocks to actually get away with that. And although they are screwed in as well, that's just for more support. They're also epoxied on. And I'm never going to need to get them off anyway. Um, but I can't. <laughs> but um, Then the next, or the other part of the landing gear runs up through this hole, through the fuselage. And I'm going to have to put that in when I'm halfway through covering the model. Because I can't cover over this hole while there's... A rod coming out and I can't put the block that holds it all on here when it's all covered it's just not doable um, also uh, I found some pieces of plywood I can use here oh and I cut these out because they were a shape shown on the plan but they don't actually exist on the design this is just the outline of what the cow should look like from a side view and uh, all I'm going to do is just put a balsa block that fits snugly between them in and just shape it as it was intended to be. Uh, but I've got to get my engine in first so I can have a hole going neatly around the engine. Because I, I, I don't know how to make the engine fit. I'm going to make a nice block and then I'm going to have the engine in and the block's not going to go on. And uh, it's, just, uh, it's just how it's got to be. 
And I've got, I now know where the rudder control horn, elevator control horn is going to be. I've actually made the control rod up now that runs through the fuselage from the servo to the elevator, but I've left that upstairs. Um, but I've, I also know where the rudder control horns are going to be now. And you can't have, it's a pull push system, it runs on. I can't find it. There's basically very thin cable which runs from the control horns to the servo arms and there should be no play in it but you can't have this wire binding with any balsa wood. It'll just tear through it and then you'll have slack cables and a destroyed airframe. So I found some pl hard plastic tubing and the the wire is going to run through these plastic tubes and then straight to the rudder. Now, I've got no idea how that's going to work. I did that on another plane, but on this plane, the only way of steering it is through the rudder. Whereas on my other planes, the primary source of steering is via ailerons, and the rudder is just a su supplement. So I don't know how that's going to work, if it's not good enough, I'm going to have to change it pretty soon, I guess. Um, oh yeah, I've also got this hatch, which wasn't sure on the plans, I've had to make this um, so I can get the servos out if I need to at a later date, because getting them out through here is just not doable. Uh, I've also made now one wing spar. Because I was waiting to go to the model shop to get some balsa wood for the cow. And I just thought, well, I've got to get on with something else. So I made the spur for the wing, or one spur. And uh, it didn't take too long. Um, it, that's ready to put ribs on now. But I'm, I'm going to stay away from the wing until everything else is done from this point. Unless I'm stuck for things to do. But as, I, I don't think that's going to be the case because... Uh, I've got everything I need now to finish off everything you see here. Um, I've, I've also got some wheels. I was struggling to find some wheels that are actually big enough for this model. Um, I've got some. They are nice, actually. I think they're for a Piper Cub, but they're a little bit heavier than I'd like, but they should be fine. I'm also buying a new engine for this. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a new engine for another plane I've got and then put that engine in this because the engine I'm going to put in this is a little bit worn out but in a model like this I should hopefully get a lot more life out of it still um, and hopefully I'll have that very soon and I'll be able to show you in the next video oh yeah I've mentioned the fuel tank well the engine that's going in this I gauged today flying it how long the flights can be safely the tank that's in it that that engine is running off right now is I'm not sure what it is in ounces but it's 270 cubic centimetres and the tank that's going in this I think is 400 cubic centimetres and you can get if you take it easily 15 minutes out of a 270cc tank safely in a model that requires a lot of power from this engine so I'm hoping that set up properly and flown as efficiently as possible I could possibly get flight time getting on for half an hour out of this model which was the intention I don't know if I'll ever fly it for that length of time but it's just nice to be able to on a nice evening to just float around for quite a while which is the, it's the idea of a model like this I guess um, I've still got to make the engine mounts out of that aluminium plate. I've still got to drill the hole. Uh, I've still got to do pretty much all of the wings still. Um, I've got to finish off that elevator and then I've got to make sure it blends into the elevator nicely here. So I'm going to cover all of this and then it'll just be the fuselage to do before I start the wings. But there is still a lot of work to do on the fuselage to be honest. Um, I was expecting, when, before I started the build, I was expecting it to take anywhere from 70 
to 85 hours to build the whole thing. And obviously that's a joke because I'm at 86 and a bit hours now. And um, I would say I'm only just getting on for halfway really. Because there's a lot of work to do on the wings and then there's still a lot of work to do on the fuse really, even though I've done a lot. Um, I could essentially cover this now, other than the cowl area. And it would be airworthy with wings, obviously. Um, but it's not quite there yet. But it, it, it is getting there. And I, keep, I, I meant to document this whole build really well. I, I said at the start of this build on the first video, you just get carried away and you forget about documenting the build. Um, that's pretty much what's happened again here. So um, yeah, this is what I've done so far. I've had something to, I've had something worth showing this video, really. But yeah, that's it. Um, I'm gonna hope to be making another video soon about, or with the engine and what I'm gonna do with the nose area. But that's it for this video, I think. So there'll be another update coming soon, I guess.